I've been thinking lately about how you order comics. You know, you get the you get the catalog, you get these um, kind of archaic order sheets, and you try and figure out what to do. And I think that situation can be improved. Hey there, this is Perch. Um, you know, this is probably something, I'm going to get some screenshot, or I'll figure out a way to, um, I wish I, maybe I should have done this video just ordering. I'll do that next time. I'm going to film a video just ordering comics. I just want you to see what that process is like a little bit with the catalog and with the actual kind of order sheet. But for, for this video, we're going to talk more about how to change it. So that'll be more of an informative video. This will be more of a how to change a video. If I'm smart and clever, which I won't be, um, I will get them in the right order. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, anyway, so what's striking me lately is that, you know, there's a lot of conversations over the last month, I would say, within comic shops. People are trying out the new pull box system that, that Diamond is, is doing. Some people have in, either in beta or they're there's just people, you know, messing around with that. And then, a lot, you know, a, a fair number of people, I think, are commenting that they feel like they have a better ordering system for customers. And then it was this sentence that kind of um, that kind of caught my attention and got me thinking, which was, why is it that the comic uh, the comic shop can figure out a mechanism for subscriptions? Meaning, um, you know, we have these 10 customers, these 10 customers all order Aquaman. So we know that, you know, in our system, we know that we're going to order them Aquaman and, and have it in their pull box for next month. And this all kinds of, it, you know, happens more or less invisibly to the consumer. The customer comes in and they just get the comic and they come in the next month, they get the comic. They don't have to kind of manually, you know, fill out a form every single month. So why is it that the comic store can figure that out? But the giant distributor that services all these these stores and has employees and reps and tech people and, you know, a whole host of Portland's finest. Uh, why is it that they can't figure out something that comic shops figured out back in the late 80s? And and why can't they have a reasonable method of like last month you ordered 10 this month? You might want to order 12 or, you know, why can't there be some recommendations? Why can't say a Marvel or a DC come in and kind of identify or flag in the order form, you know, this is the start of a new story arc or this title crosses over. I mean, there's some of that, I guess you get the little initials, you get the like AC for absolute carnage. Like, okay, this title is an absolute carnage book, but why couldn't you have like a, a you know, first of all, a web form, uh, you have some web forms now, I guess I'm, I'm being a little, you know, my memory is also going from the, uh, you know, the late eighties, early nineties with capital city and then diamond and everything else where it was like this paper kind of order system, you know, and then there was, there's fax machines involved and it, it, anyway. Um, but why can't you have a, a nice clean filtering system where you're like, show me all the titles for absolute carnage. And then they'll just come and then it will show last month you ordered this, you know, what do you want to order for this month? And maybe it's already kind of pre-filled in and you try, you choose whether you want to toggle it up or down. And there could be like a flag or a filter on there to say, you know, here's, um, there's a new artist team, a new writer team, a new, there's some, there's some change to the book. So you might want to look at this order a little bit more carefully or, Hey, uh, there, you know, it's the same old guys. So, you know, you want to probably just do what you did last month. It's middle of a story arc. It, it just seems like if you could do that, um, you'd, you'd get a couple benefits out of it. First off, I think it would make life a little easier for Marvel. When I talk to, to reps, when I talk to creators, when I see people online kind of shilling and marking their book, and they do things like, don't forget, it's, it's you know, free cutoff day. And, and again, I'm looking like, you know, why is it that Candy Crush on my, on, you know, my iPhone, I don't have it on my iPhone anymore. That's a terrible game. Like, you play it for a while, and you're like, I don't understand why people are doing this. And then, like, a month later... You're, uh, you're, you're just like, uh, you're level 348 and you're like, why are people, do wait, why am I doing this? And then you delete it. That's kind of, that's, that's my pattern anyway. Um, so why is it that, that these, these games, these kind of very kind of knockoff things, I guess that, that game makes a ton of money. So that kind of answers no question, but most of these games, they can figure out in-app notifications. So they can figure out things where you have like an app and something comes in it's like, Hey, it's, you know, free cutoff day for these five titles. I mean, that's not the hardest thing in the world to do. And I just feel like there's this, the, the system for ordering still is a very janky page. It, um, 
it, it, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe it's just, well, I know, no, it's not just me because other people have complained about this where, you know, it's like, oh, and your browser decides to just commit suicide right in the middle of an order, or, you know, whatever it happens to be. There's just a bunch of dumb in there that if you took that away and if the publishers, you know, so one argument here is, you know, hey, by having it, you know, done this way, it benefits the big two because you kind of, uh, you know, by the time you wade through kind of the big two and their mountain of titles, you're exhausted and you need a nap and you don't, you know, like, ah, I'll deal with these indies later. And then you just don't. Um, I think I've heard that theory put out um, quite a bit. And I, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't get, I, I don't need a nap in the middle of my comic order. I'm not that old. Uh, but still, I think there's some truth to that of like, if you, if you make it kind of convoluted, just so much you have to wade through and it's like, all right, this, hang on, this incentive scheme means you need to order 20 books to get this one variant cover of this other title and qualify for the, you know, it's like that, that, that meme, that gif where you've got the woman and she's confused and she's doing math and she's trying to, you know, the, the mask going on her head and she's trying to figure out what to do. That's like ordering, you know, Marvel. And then DC is kind of the simpler version of that. And then you got image and everything else. And by the time you get through those, that's, that's going to be your money that you're making. So now you've got to deal with the rest of the indies. And I know at least for me and other people I've talked to, your mind kind of shifts at that point. Instead of kind of thinking in terms of, okay, here's the bread and butter, here's what, what's got to be sold to, to you know, make rent and to make a little bit of a profit. And, you know, how do we, how much of a risk do I want to take on this new book? Cause, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a month ending in, <laughs> well, actually, that doesn't work that way. Um, it's, it's a month of the year. And so, you know, we've got at least 20 brand new number ones coming out from, uh, from Marvel and DC. So, you know, how much of a risk are you going to take with these and, and what are you going to do? And I think that's, you know, it, there's just, it's, it, it, there, there is, like I said, there's a shift. You get into the indie books and suddenly it becomes like, well, you know, uh, what kind of bet do I want to take on this? Do I want to, do I want to work two issues or four issues? I mean, you're, you're thinking in terms of just tiny, tiny scale of comics. You're just, you're like, how small? And then you start thinking about your shelf. And you're like, I've got really room for like 80 comics uh, that are coming in. And so what are the, you know, what are the 15 indie books that I want to try and push out? And that's, that's a, a screwed up way of thinking. I, I mean, I just want to say, um, that's not how you should be thinking for indies because the right way to be thinking, you know, you can tell yourself this, but it doesn't necessarily make it happen, is that you should be thinking, hey, if I want to reduce my dependence on kind of these, you know, the big two publishers and their various shenanigans, then I need to start pushing these indie books. I need to start getting a healthy kind of recurring audience for these titles because if I do, then it will bring up the indie market. If I bring up the indie market, then that will create some more platform stability for my sales and comics. And if that happens, then Marvel and DC will also step up their game because they've got other people coming in and selling. I mean, there's just all the benefits to paying attention to the indies. And I think in many ways you, you would want it flipped. You would want the Marvel and the DC orders to be almost on autopilot. Like uh, if you could have a really, really clever program, that's like, I'm going to spend, you know, I'm going to spend $3,000 on Marvel uh, books. <laughs> that's not nearly enough, but let's say I'm going to spend, I'll, I'll go more. Let, I'm going to spend $10,000 on my Marvel books this month. So therefore it's what kind of breakdown, um, you know, how, how does, how do, how does it all be put together? What are the incentive programs? What are the variant programs? What are all the different little mechanisms, you know, go ahead and, and pre-fill out all my fields based on my budget of $10,000 and my past history of ordering. And then I can go through and tweak it. That's kind of how you'd want Marvel and DC to operate. You would want those to be very mindless. And then you'd want to spend the next, you know, the bulk of time, like 90% of your time, you'd want to spend on the indies. You'd want to spend kind of researching the books, figuring out, hey, or do any of the creators uh, live locally for some of these books? Is it a case where I could get them into the shop to do a, a signing or a promotion or, or something? How can I get some interest in building up this other part of the market? Because I do believe that if the comic industry is, you know, a healthier comic industry, which would benefit the big two, is one that would have, uh, you know, a, a healthy, a healthy distribution of, you know, sure, Marvel and DC still leading the way, but maybe they're leading the way with like, you know, each of them having 25 percent. 
And then the other 50% is made up of indies and, you know, some image books and other things. But that would be a healthier model. If you had that kind of spread, it would just, uh, it would preserve you against all kinds of crazy that would go on in the industry. And and the, the, the weird part there, and it, this you'd never convince uh, Marvel or DC of this, but it would be healthier for them as well. I mean, it would be, if you could stabilize parts of the ordering and the comics coming in, if you could make it all easier so that shops are able to spend more time actually thinking about how to move the product, now position it and all the rest, then, you know, life gets better for, for everyone, for them included. You know, I, I, again, I talk to creators, I talk to editors, I talk to reps at Marvel, more Marvel in DC in this regard, but, you know, they don't like having to tweet out, you know, don't miss final cutoff. Uh, you know, don't, don't forget that you have to make this order to get to this and that. They don't like doing that. Um, many of them see it as a, you know, many of them see it as an unpleasant obligation. A few of them see it as a necessary obligation, meaning they're not necessarily unhappy about it uh, because they feel like, hey, it's, it's, you know, their part to make a healthy business. And I appreciate that attitude, by the way. It's absolutely the right attitude. I'll, I'll give, um, I like to give credit to people that make a lot of the angry kind of comic fans more angry. Um, because, but I, I still think in the back of my stubborn, dumb caveman head, I think that, Hey, if, uh, if we could get to more reason here, then we'll have a happier community. We'll have, you know, if people are dealing with facts, it will improve everything. But, um, so two people like Alana Smith who make, uh, you know, a lot of people, um, struggle with her as an editor. Uh, but to her credit, she hustles on, on social media. She hustles to, Say here's the cutoff time. Here's the you know you got to order this and that and here here that and she's and if you send her a DM, she's pretty like okay yeah I got it I'm all right here uh, oh you forgot about this sure I'll remind people about that she she does her job uh, which is good that's that's what she should do and but at the same time and then she does it cheerfully I don't see her I've never encountered her um, uh, either kind of in person or online ever going. You know, I hate having to, what kind of job is this? And I have to market my own books. Um, I always, I always hate those posts. Like, because if you're tweeting that out, you think about it, it's somebody who is upset and everybody gets upset about things all the time. It's fine, but you're upset. You're so upset. You decide to pick up your phone or go to your laptop and type in, I am upset and then hit tweet about the company you're working for. Most people, most normal people, they get upset. They like, or they go and they have a beer, they kick their dog, they do whatever. Hopefully not kick their dog, but you know, they, they grumble and then they, you know, go do yoga or drink beer, or, you know, whatever. Uh, hey, two guesses, which one I fall into. Um, anyway, that's yoga. Um, anyway, but it, they, this is, um, it's an unpleasant part of the job. But they do it cheerfully, but it shouldn't have to be. I, I guess my point about all this is if you give the shop better tools, if you give them better calculators, better filters, better kind of just ordering things. And what I'm saying is not like magical technology. I'm not saying, oh my God, you know, what we got to do is develop a kind of VR holodeck where there's a virtual store and the shop owners will be able to go there and kind of trial using a combination of VR and AR, the different comics that are coming. I'm not, good Lord, I'm not talking about building the Star Trek holodeck. I'm saying just have an order form that has some better filtering, things that make sense. And again, if I go to, if I go to Apple and granted that's a, you know, they've got their tech company thing going on, but if I go there and I buy the new iPhone, it's in my face. Like, Hey, did you want to, you want to have this $50 case? How about these headphones? What about all that? I mean, they're sending their recommendations at me based on the title I order. And you can say, well, that's Apple. It's a big company. Yeah. Except, you know, I, I re <laughs> I've ordered stuff like I've ordered plumbing parts um, from like a local just, you know, plumbing, uh, you know, outlet store that's got a website and they're doing right. Like, Hey, you, you, you know, I see that you're buying a new kitchen sink. Have you thought about the pipes just in the order form? Like, I, I mean, how hard can it be? And, and again, it's, I think people, um, they, they give a lot of, I don't say credit, but they get, they say, Oh, we'll give you a pass. It's just comics. It's like, but, but it's, it's, you know, the two biggest suppliers are owned by two of the big, kind of media, you know, one's a giant media communications department. The other is the biggest kind of media IP department in the world. Um, I, I, you know, th that's who's supplying these comics. And now granted, you know, Diamond isn't one of those two, but, you know, they're, they're, they make money. I mean, <laughs> let's not, 
it's not pretend diamonds over there like ah uh, kind of just you know there's a bunch of diamond employees huddled around a, like a trash can fire and they're they're just trying to stay warm get ready for tuesday and or sorry not tuesday like their, their day is you know they're, they're more like friday when was there i i talked to somebody once and like their light day is is like tuesday and then part of wednesday and then it's usually kind of somewhere in that zone is where you know the stores have really started complaining that they didn't get what they wanted or stuff's all blown up in the box and then their day kind of goes south again before they have to pack things back up again but yeah i don't know if that's true i remember talking to a guy at the uh you know emerald city con and um and the whole conversation was weird because it's like, hey, have you thought about this and this? And there was a mix of kind of shame and defensiveness and uh, a lot of emotions going through this guy. It's like you could tell that they, they didn't want to talk. Um, <laughs> they, just, they just wasn't quite sure why they were there because um, it's like, ah, you know, because the creators are beating up on him and, and the stores are beating up on him. It's like, man, you, you should you should go to a different convention like if you. There's no, there's nothing good for you here. Um, anyway, I, so sorry. There's just some thoughts. I, I think this all may all sound ridiculous. If you're on the outside, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe nobody has any interest in this at all. Um, as a fan, as a consumer, I'm just saying, if you, if you improve the ordering process, if you made it so that it wasn't so crappy, then it would free up the store to do other things that would, I think would lead to a healthier store, um, healthier platform, healthier, you know, financial stability and uh, better interaction with the fans. I think they could carry some of that spare time, set free stuff over the fans. And I also think this helps Marvel and DC. Like I said, they get to promote their kind of crazy schemes in a more systematic way that would, you know, free up time on their end. It would, I think it would increase orders. I, I suspect if you made a better ordering system, you would find, um, you know, a significant uptick in orders because comic shops would, would order more. Uh, they they tend to if if you're really confused about what you're ordering and you have it is a chore, then I think over time you order less. You just you you tap out at some point. So I think people would spend more money. So I think all that stuff and it would definitely help the indies because I think it would give you know if you're an indie publisher trying to start things up, it gives you some tools to actually you know get some things going to to market your book in a different way to kind of get yourself some better recognition. I think all this stuff is, is good stuff, but anyway, what do I know? Um, I, I don't know anything. Uh, Hey, what do you think? Do you have any questions on any of this? Uh, do, does any of this make sense? I kind of, I don't feel like I described well, like I said, I'll set up a, you know, just a camera and then show kind of how comics are ordered. I think this is the screen kind of really walk through that. And I think that will, that will also be eye opening for some folks, uh, for, for many of you, if you, you know, or super boring. One of those two. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe, click the bell for notification. Hope you're having an awesome day. And thank you for listening.